Hello and welcome back to Ask a Minecrafter. I'm your host Pixelriffs, and today we're answering two questions, one from Derek, who asked how to create a dark room mob spawner, and one from Weasel Frost, who wants to know how to make a mob sorting system. I thought these questions fit together pretty well. A dark room mob spawner is, as the name suggests, a player created dark space for hostile mobs to spawn, with the intention of channeling them into a place where they can be killed for their item drops and sometimes experience. A mob sorting system is the perfect companion to this, as it allows you to separate each type of mob into different areas, you won't have to make a kill mechanism that works for all mobs, and it's great for organisation. First off, let's talk about mob spawning mechanics. In the overworld, hostile mobs require a light level of 7 or below to spawn, that's why you don't often find them crawling around the surface on your first day, and why unlit caves are usually full of them when you start exploring. If we're going to make a player controlled spawning environment for mobs, it needs to be as dark as possible. Hostile mobs need a solid block to spawn on, and they won't naturally appear too close to the player, they'll usually appear at least 24 blocks away, with the exception of mob spawners found in dungeons which require players to be close. On the flip side, mobs will have a small chance to despawn once they're more than 32 blocks away, and will despawn immediately when the player is 128 blocks away. This means that if we want mobs to spawn automatically, a player will ideally need to be between 24 and 32 blocks from the dark area. So with that in mind, here is a dark room mob spawner. I've made it look pretty for the video, but it could just as easily be a box made of cobblestone. I'm about 24 blocks away here, so if I turn mob spawning on, you'll see mobs start to spawn inside here. Creepers, skeletons, spiders, witches, and zombies can all be produced from this little box. Since it's three high inside, you'll also get endermen spawning occasionally, but they'll usually teleport away, and once you reach the end, you'll have much more opportunity to farm endermen anyway. Let's lift the lid off this thing, and I'll show you how it works. Inside we have a series of 7x7 block platforms separated by two block wide canals. Each platform has a block missing adjacent to the canal and the wall, and a slab one block out from the corner. When a water source is placed at the corner, the water runs directly into the canal, leaving a 6x6-ish area for mobs to spawn, and stops right at the edge of a 2x2 hole in the middle of the room, forcing mobs to fall through. The reason the canals and the hole are two blocks wide is because of spiders. Spiders are troublemakers. They will also try to climb up the walls, although the water running around the edges of the room should usually keep them from doing that. There are a bunch of different ways to design a dark room, and I can't claim this design to be the fastest or the most efficient. Some players change the layout of the spawning space or use a timer system to activate water dispensers and flush mobs out of the room. The design I've got here isn't quite as fancy, but it's simple to understand, easy to build, and reliable. One last thing to keep in mind when you're building a darkroom spawner is where you're building it. If you build it on the surface or underground, mobs will be able to spawn in any other unlit space nearby, so you'll need to light up any nearby caves and make sure the surface is well lit at night to get the best results from your spawner. That's a lot of work, so it makes the most sense to build a darkroom high up in the sky or over a patch of deep ocean, limiting the amount of spawnable space in your surrounding environment. Remember, you'll also need a safe space for the player to stand at least 24 blocks away from the spawner, but less than 32 blocks away from the mobs leaving the spawner, so they don't despawn. So it makes the most sense to build that underneath. In order to sort mobs from each other, we can take advantage of each mob's unique characteristics and a single trait they all share. They all think an open trapdoor is a block they can walk on. Put two trapdoors together and they're guaranteed to fall through it. First of all, you want to filter out those troublemaking spiders. Spiders are only one block tall, so you'll need to set up a water flow to take them through a one or one and a half block gap and carry the rest of the two tall mobs into the next sorting area. Baby zombies are also only one block high, but if they go in with the spiders, you can use the next sorting mechanic to separate them. Villagers. Zombies will try to get to villagers, which means we can lure them over some open trap doors and they'll fall into a holding cell. At the same time, we can take advantage of Skeleton and Creeper AI. Skeletons will run away from wolves, and Creepers will run away from cats. This will make sure Skeletons and Creepers go their separate ways. The only remaining problem is Witches, who aren't as easy to control. There are a few different ways to separate Witches, and most of them involve killing other mobs in the process. Witches have more health than other mobs, and will drink healing or fire resistance potions, so they can withstand being dropped, being crushed for longer than other mobs, or you can just use lava to kill off the others and leave the Witch behind. But as with Endermen, you'll get much better Witch spawns by farming them elsewhere, so you may just want to throw them in with the Creepers. And now, it's time to ask you! Have you ever built a darkroom spawner or a mob sorting system before? Leave a comment below and share your favourite design, or ask a question for a future episode of Ask a Minecrafter. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed today's episode, and if you're new here, please subscribe. My name is Pixelriffs, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now!